This week's video is a little different. Instead of talking about iconic divas, I'm going to give a few of my thoughts on the brilliant mini TV series It's a Sin. Spoiler warning. I addictively consumed this show within a weekend and if I'm honest, I initially regretted watching it. The series left me feeling like my soul had been scraped out of my body through my eyes, thrown on the ground, and I spent about a week trying to put myself back together. It was heartbreaking. And one of the most impactful pieces of TV I have experienced in my adult life. And I think one of the biggest feelings I felt after watching it was uncomfortable. And I'll try and explain why. There was a powerful duality to the narrative. Intense joy and crippling heartbreak. Elements of it were actually quite deeply uplifting. We were shown a group of 20-something misfits who face prejudice not just from the public sphere of society, but from the private sphere of their own family. And yet, in spite of this subjugation, successfully created a new family, the Pink Palace. They found their own tribe and the portrayal of this was so inspiring. Russell T Davies and the cast were able to authentically create close-knit friendships. From the long-running joke of la, to the banter and sneering at the kitchen table, to the reckless and, if I'm being honest, very relatable party atmosphere that followed the group, their bond felt genuine. There were times I wanted to be at one of those pink palace parties and this is also one of the reasons why It's a Sin was so upsetting. The Pink Palace felt like a fortress protected from the intolerance of Margaret Thatcher's 1980s and yet it was irreparably fractured from within, fractured by a virus that bastardised satisfaction and pleasure resulting in a slow, shameful death. Just as the Pink Cup was shattered and tossed in the bin by Jill, their solidarity was equally shattered. To see the crumblings of such a loving, exuberant group of friends was emotionally arresting and really there's there's no words I can think of to accurately express the pain in witnessing this group fall apart. And I'll be honest, this left me deeply uncomfortable. But this is important. Stories often should make us feel uncomfortable to honour both the pain of the past and remind us how grateful we should feel about our present, in particular in the huge advances in treatment for HIV. So this duality of joy and suffering became the backbone of the show. The ability to combine humour and pain was done so lovingly. One of the best examples of this is when Richie tells everyone in the police van he has AIDS. There is actually a great joke thrown in there where he says, all his friends are here. And who are you? This felt like a very truthful presentation of a painful experience, because rarely it's just one emotion. The amalgamation of melancholy and comedy felt authentic, and it encapsulated the show. Of course, Richie's demise was still brutal. It felt like he was possibly on the cusp of fame, and yet we witnessed the permanent striking down of that potential. It's rather chilling that his manager pleads with him to be different, not to go home like all the other boys, and yet, that's exactly what happens. There was a very sad scene where we begin to see Richie's health collapse. Jill tells him, it's half seven, time for your bed, and he walks so fragile, so feeble, so frail, to his bedroom, which is worlds apart from the Richie only a few episodes before, where he's partying every night under lasers. He's effectively been robbed of his youth, and the group all have to grow up so fast, too fast, it's awful to see, and as a viewer, I felt powerless. Colin's death, though, in particular, was harrowing. He didn't live this high-octane, exhilarating, fun party life like Richie, no. He contracted HIV from an abusive homophobe. And his subsequent demise into cognitive collapse felt so unfair. And his death, I think, seriously hit quite a few of us because it showed how AIDS robbed the world of simple, average, normal kind people. Often AIDS is associated with rock stars and icons, but Colin was living just a very normal life, content and happy to be given the key to open the shop in the morning. And It's a Sin did a wonderful, respectful job in highlighting how lovely normal people leading their lovely normal lives were lost. The random chance of AIDS was also depicted, with Roscoe jumping for joy at his negative result, proclaiming how is this possible? He's fucked so many guys. 
Little of this felt fair, or just. The arbitrary nature of the virus speckled across the Pink Palace with little care, like a capricious curse that left a permanent loss. Richie's mother telling Jill that Richie had passed was especially cruel. My own personal shock was met with an audible gasp in the sitting room as I watched. A decade-long friendship ended, gone, finished, with no goodbye, no resolution, simply ended. Richie's mother's actions were reprehensible, but understandable. Finding out your prized boy has AIDS as he fights cancer in an AIDS ward is unimaginable. And her need to gain control as her world shattered isn't a justification for her actions, but it is a haunting explanation. And I'll never forget her pacing up and down the hallway, her body language confident and powerful, her eyes warped in angry disbelief. Those visuals were deeply arresting. An unusual and unplanned comparison was the AIDS epidemic of the 80s compared with the COVID pandemic of the 2020s. The cruel stopping of joyful socialisation may have occurred under different landscapes, however, the pain of such isolation in the show left me rather reflective of our own current plight and also reminded me that we're trapped to repeat the past if we don't learn from it. There's so much more I could talk about. The subtle grin and laugh Colin gives as he outwardly confesses he wants a boyfriend. The confident, daring bravery, not just of Roscoe's clothes, but the soul behind the garments. The cruel dehumanisation of Gloria as he sobbly reveals he doesn't want to be seen like a slut. But what I'd like to know actually is from the other fans of the show. What moment hit you the hardest? What sub plotline or nuanced look did you enjoy the most? I'd love to hear in the comment section. And there's really only one way I can accurately end this video. La.